Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is just going to be a very short tutorial on how I stitched together my recent mosaic image on the Orion and the Horsehead Nebula. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so we're in Pick Insight now, and as you can see, these are the four panes of my mosaic that I want to stitch together in one image. And as you can see, they overlap quite well, the stars align quite nicely, um, but I was having a lot of issues doing this until I found the, um, the three steps I'm going to show you today. Um, so it's three simple st stages. The first is Image Solver, which essentially plate solves each of the images. Then you need to use the mosaic by coordinates tool and that places each of the individual images into one larger empty image which I'll show you a bit more about and then you use the gradient merge mosaic tool to actually stitch them all together. So quite a straightforward process and one that worked really well for me so I thought I'd put this video together to show you. I'm just going to close these images because I don't actually need them they are saved onto um, or in a folder. So these images here they haven't been and nothing's been done to them they've just been rotated um, to a lineup but none of them have been stretched they're just uh, auto stretched to show you um, so the first thing we need to do is use the image solver tool so if you go to script you go to image analysis and then you go down to image solver um, and this is essentially going to plate solve each of your images um, so what you need to do is add the files that you want to stitch together so in my case the four panes from my mosaic so I've got this saved in a file folder called mosaic video and um, so I'm just going to load each of these in um, so this is the output um, suffix so after I've plate solved each of these images they will go into the same folder and they will just have WCS after them in their file name. Um, this bit here is quite important so you need to make sure you've put in your um, focal um, length so the millimeters of your telescope um, and also the date so this is slightly wrong I, these were taken on the 4th of um, January so this is in a uh, year month day so the 4th of January 2022 um, and then what we can do is we can either put in the coordinates manually so if you know the uh, coordinates for each of these um, panes you can put them in or what I'm going to do is just search here so if I t click on search if I type Orion and hit search come up with the Orion Nebula. Now I've got two panes which are essentially of Orion and two panes which are of the Horsehead Nebula so I think what's going to happen is two of them are going to plate solve and two of them are going to fail but I'm going to do that anyway and see what happens. Okay so that's happened and as expected pane one and three which was the left hand side of my mosaic as you looked at it with the horse head and the, the uh, gas above the horse head failed um, but the two that did work were that of the um, Orion Nebula so as you can see in my folder now where I had the original four panes I've got two panes and um, with the WCS uh, suffix afterwards that's the um, the Orion Nebula and just below so what I need to do is run that again but this time I need to make sure I type in Horsehead Nebula and I need to remove the ones that have been uh, plate solved so um, I can clear the uh, pane 4 because that worked and I can also clear pane 2 because that worked and down here instead of the Orion Nebula I'm just going to search Horsehead And I'm going to hit search and then OK and then I'm going to run it again and then hopefully this will um, will have worked and those two images will have played solved as well. OK so that worked so if I go to my folder now I can see that all of the four panes have WCS after them in the file name and they've all been plate solved now so they've all got the coordinates of that image in that the metadata of that file. Um, if you're struggling to do that then what I'd suggest is doing them individually so putting your the pane in individually just one at a time and then just putting in the, the coordinates manually so finding that out from something like Telescopius or using the data you used on your ASI Air or your um, your ne on, on Nina to, to actually plan the mosaic in the first place you'd have needed that information to, to plan the mosaic so you can just type this in here 
Um, but that's stage one done. Um, so now we need to move on to stage two, which is mosaic spy coordinates. OK, so stage number two is using the mosaic spy coordinates tool. And from what I can gather, this is essentially telling Pick Insights how big your overall mosaic is going to be. So you go to scripts, you go to utilities and then down to mosaic spy coordinates. Um, and this stage is really, really simple. So all you do is add the files that we've just created. So add those files that have been plate solved with the uh, WCS in their file name. Click open and that adds them in there. You then can leave all of this as default um, and just change your output directory. So I'm going to choose where I'm going to save it, which is into the mosaic video, the same folder. They're going to come out with the uh, suffix registered um, and then we hit OK. And it will give you this warning saying that the resulting images are going to be very large. Um, that's good because we're creating a mosaic. So just hit yes and it will start that process. This takes a little bit of time, um, but essentially all this is doing from what I can gather is putting each of the individual panes into one larger image um, which is the same size as the resulting image. It's quite hard to explain but I'll show you after this is done. Okay so that's finished it took about 10 minutes and now you can see in my, my folder I have four additional files so they all have registered next to them and that's where each of the pane has been registered inside the the larger mosaic. So if I just open one to show you um, because it's quite hard to explain. Um, I just stretch this. You can see here's the, the pane of the horsehead nebula and this is what the, the size of the horsehead nebula image and this is how large the final mosaic is going to be. So what we need to do now, we've got four of these and we need to stitch them together into one final image. So we're on to the final stage now and what we're going to use, we're going to go to processes, all processes, scroll down to gradient merge mosaic. So this is the final stage. Okay, so we open Gradient Merge Mosaic. What we need to do is add those files that we've just created. Um, so we're going to select those, add those in. Um, okay, so they're loaded in there now. So now what we need to do is play around with some of these parameters down here. Now, on the Pick Insight website or the information you get when you search Gradient Merge Mosaic, it says you can use these default settings. Now, I tried that and that didn't work at all. I had re very big joins and it didn't work. Um, so people suggest trying to play around with these top three settings here. So type of combination, you've got average or overlay. Now average tries to smooth the difference between each of your panes. So it tries to, to smooth the, the gradients between the two. Now that sounds brilliant, um, but when I tried that, that didn't work for me. Um, and most people online on, on the forums as well were saying that overlay worked best for them. Um, so I used the overlay tool and that worked really well. Um, the next is the shrink radius. Now this is about how many pixels that you're going to take out of each of the panes of your image. So again, when doing a little bit of reading on the Pick Insight website, I found out that when you merge mosaics together, not all of the pixels on each of the edges of the pane is a full pix pixel with all of the detail. Um, so you need to take out some of those individual pixels, in, otherwise you get some artifacts in your image. Um, Again, when reading online, most people suggest that six to eight is the best um, is the best thing to use here for shrink radius. Now, I use six and that worked really well for me. But yeah, people are saying use six between six and eight. Um, again, Pick Insight says leave that at one, but that didn't work when I tried. Um, so the feather radius is basically smoothing out the borders between each of the panes and this the, this setting will depend on how many bright stars you have on in the overlaps of each of your images. Um, so I already know that I've got quite a few bright stars in the middle of um, my mosaics. So I had to put this quite high. And how I worked out what the best uh, number was is I started at 100, um, ran it, and it didn't look great. And then I went down in multiples of fives until I found one that worked. Um, that was just some, some suggestions online, people uh, suggesting give that a go. So when I got to 85, that worked really well for me. Um, lots of people are saying that if you have images with less stars in, um, less bright stars in the overlaps of your um, your panes, the, the, the individual panes of your mosaics, then use a lower number here and that will work really well. Um, but these were the settings that I used. So what I'm going to do is hit run and that will merge that mosaic together um, and I should have a final image to edit. 
Okay, so that's finished um, and it has produced this image here, which is my final stitch together mosaic. So I'm just going to stretch it and show you what it looks like. And there we go. We have one final large mosaic image. And when I zoom in and look around um, this image, I just make it slightly larger. Um, I can't see any joins anywhere in any of these panes. Um, you can zoom in as close as you like and you can't see anything here where they overlap um, and I think that that's absolutely fantastic. Um, so I really struggled with this before finding this method um, but this method seemed to work really well for me um, especially if you have multiple panes to stitch together at once. Um, I have since been told that you can do it in APP as well um, so I'm gonna take a look and see how that works um, but this was the method that I used to stitch together my mosaic in Piggins. So I hope you found that tutorial beneficial. Like I said a few people have mentioned that APP does a really good job as well so I'm gonna check that out and I'll keep you posted. I hope you've enjoyed the video and if you have please do hit that like button and if you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so it would really help the channel. But uh, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video when I have a great image of the Jellyfish Nebula to share with you.